Hi, in this video we're going to be taking a brief look at some of the new features for PRISM Pro in the 5.5 release. First item we'll be looking at is the dynamic learning algorithms uh, that are used to detect anomalies, which is a difference in the behavior of a virtual machine or an underlying host. Okay, here we're in the PRISM Central Council, and uh, within here we can use any of the PRISM Pro features that have been licensed. We'll uh, pop over to the Explore tab, and then uh, we'll grab a, you know, a couple of our example uh, virtual machines. Here we're looking at the uh, detailed view for our virtual machine that we're going to look at here. If the uh, VM did have any anomalies within the last 24 hours, it would show here and have an account. If we click on that, it would uh, you know, take us to a list-based view that we could see all the anomalies and uh, when they were detected. We're just going to go ahead and pop to the Metrics tab so we can see all the, all the different metrics that uh, have learning behavior attached to them. So we have multiple CPU metrics, met, you know, memory metrics, and storage, etc. And then uh, we're going to stay on the CPU one, and I'm going to lengthen our time frame here to a longer number of days. And the dark blue line is our you know, actual CPU usage for this virtual machine. And the light blue bar that surrounds it is the baseline, and that's the learned behavior for this virtual machine. It's a, a plus or minus, so uh, we allow um, you know, the, the learning to understand if the VM goes up a little or below, that it shouldn't generate uh, warnings, but only if it should exceed um, the baseline either above or below it, then an anomaly would be created <clears throat> and we would notify you based upon that. So we can see in the course of uh, the 21 days here that we're looking, there's been a, a handful of anomalies um, for that. This first one, we exceeded CPU usage for a brief period of time, so there was one anomaly detected. And then that anomaly persisted. Uh, it, it did not you know, stay above the baseline for the persistent, but we could see it relearn the baseline here. And then we had a much larger spike uh, in CPU where a number of anomalies were detected and, and we were alerted for them. And then since that did persist, again, our, our baseline uh, widened and, and increased. And then as it relearns it over time, it will uh, decrease and become a tighter baseline. If we'd like to click on any of these, then we could go to a, a detail-based view and, and see you know, more details uh, to that particular anomaly for that. We get these metrics both for virtual machines uh, and for the hosts um, that they run on. So if we'd like to quickly take a look at host, uh, we'll pick this one, and the charts are very much the same uh, for the host. We can see the same CPU type of metrics here, and uh, let's widen our range. And we'll get to see this host uh, also experienced you know, a large increase uh, in CPU usage, um, so we had several anomalies created for this. So this is great uh, to understand you know, the actual behaviors that you should be concerned about in your virtual machines. Uh, rather than setting just a static threshold, um, you know, that might not kick in until 80%. Uh, if you set that as your threshold, when we may be concerned about, you know, if it reaches, you know, 40, 50, 60% for the, for the given workload, because that's abnormal for it. And then not only if it's going up, but if my VM all of a sudden went down to, you know, zero CPU, CPU utilization, when it normally has something higher, I would equally be concerned because that means that processes or applications are likely not running. So now we'll take a look at finding wasted resources and uh, right-sizing VMs to get uh, resources back within your environment. So we're back here on the, the home page in Prism Central, and we can see there's an efficiency widget uh, on the dashboard that tells us about over-provisioned VMs, uh, constrained VMs, inactive VMs, and bully VMs. Now, over-provisioned uh, simply means that uh, you know the VM is given more resources in the terms of CPU, memory, or disk capacity than it's currently using, so they've been flagged that there's potential uh, you know, resources that you could reclaim back. Now, constrained VMs are just the exact opposite, where a VM uh, potentially does not have enough resources to meet its demand. So if it's constantly running you know, high CPU utilization, uh, it could be constrained, which could be affecting your performance, so you may want to consider uh, giving it more resources. Where an active is, um, it's certainly powered off VMs that have been powered off for more than 30 days, but it's also running virtual machines that uh, are using very minimal amounts of resources. So again, we're using the VM learning behavior to understand what's normal, and if that VM is consuming just a finite amount of resources, it's flagged as being inactive 
and uh, potentially get your resources back. If we click on any of these, we'll be taken to the Explorer, bill, uh, the Explorer view, and all the right filters will be shown. So here we're provided with a list of you know, the over-provisioned VMs, and, and we get a list, and it, it'll be multiple pages if it's that long. It shows us whether it's over-provisioned, and if it's actually you know, potentially over-provisioned and constrained, it's in different categories. So uh, here we shows we're over-provisioned in CPU, but we're constrained in memory, so it's kind of a, a double-edged sword there where we should give it some more memory, but take some CPU back to get it right-sized properly. And then I can click on any of these and then go ahead and edit the resources to, to bring it into a line with, with the recommendation. And we show this uh, both in the widget on the previous page, we show it in this Explorer view. If we would uh, pick one of these virtual machines and go into the you know, metrics like we showed before, we also highlight this um, in the charts to let us know, uh, you know up here if, if a VM is constrained or over-provisioned. And then also if we would go in and edit a virtual machine, like if we wanted to add more resources, um, it would tell us right here. So if I got a request to add more CPUs to this VM and I didn't check to see if it was over-provisioned in the other way areas, uh, simply when I went in here to make the update, if I was going to change this from four Z C CPUs to six, uh, I'd see the warning uh, warning me that it's already oversized, and that should have me, uh, you know, take pause and decide if I want to give it more V CPUs when it's already over provisioned. And last up, we're just going to take a look at the schedule reporting feature uh, and the type of information that you can get out of that. So we're back here at uh, Prism Central, and once again, we will uh, go to the Explorer page. And on the left here, uh, we'll see Reporting. So we'll choose that. And uh, within uh, the product ships uh, a couple of uh, predefined reports, which these are CAN templates, um, which you can certainly use, or you can use them to clone, and then you can modify them uh, to your needs. And then you have the ability to, to create new reports, and there's a nice uh, visual reporting template that you use here. You simply just uh, you know pick them you know the type. If I want to have a bar chart, uh, you know I get to pick on which level of entity I'd like to, to report that on. Uh, pick the metrics, and I can choose you know how how wide it is. And then if I want to report on all the clusters or just a subset of clusters, and, and the same applies with virtual machines. Do you want to report on your whole environment or just you know certain virtual machines? And then uh, you know there's, there's many different types of charts. Uh, there's more, you know, static uh, types of counts, and in here you can get the same type of information on uh, resource. So if I wanted to see how much memory I could potentially gain back or CPU gain back, if I wanted to see a list of all the over-provisioned VMs, etc., I can create a, uh, a report to do that. And there's actually um, a couple of reports that ship from the factory uh, as part of that. And then any of these reports, <clears throat> you can certainly just run them ad hoc from, you know, from choosing a report and, uh, you know, select run and pick the time frame that you want to run it against. But you can also uh, schedule the reports. So if you'd like them to run, you know, on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, and then they can be emailed directly to you or to a distribution list so they're easy to get. And the reports are uh, easy to modify. So if you want to put a logo on them, um, you know, change the colors, that type of things, so it's very easy to get to. Here's the instance of uh, reports for this particular one. So we'll just go ahead and click on one of these. It'll launch the PDF, and you get to uh, you know see a sample of uh, you know what this looks like. So the reports can you know certainly include charts, graphs, and uh, text data for that. Thanks for watching this video, and hope you enjoyed everything new in Prism Pro 5.5.